And we are live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, fans of the Buffalo Bills. Welcome to today's episode of The Shout, and I am your host for Buffalo Fanatics, Joe DeRosa. And I'm very excited to be with you all today. We just had one of the most exciting weekends in a long time for everyone involved with the Buffalo Bills, all of the fans, everyone at Buffalo Fanatics. We are ecstatic that the 2018 draft has finally finally happened. We have been waiting so long. We have seen endless speculation, so many projections, so many rumor mills, so many possible trades that didn't end up even happening. Those have all been gone, and we are finally able to review the 2018 draft for the Buffalo Bills. So I want to thank all of you for joining me today, because today's episode is going to be reviewing our draft. And I see all of you starting to view. So welcome to The Shout, which I will have the episode today's podcast later on my Shout Engine. So stay tuned for that. But before I begin today's show, I want you guys, everyone who's viewing, everyone who ends up viewing this show today, to do two things for me. The first thing is to listen to the song of the day in the link underneath the title of today's Facebook Live. That is our song of the day. It is a song called Kathleen by a band called Catfish and the Bottlemen. It is a fantastic song, an alternative rock song to be exact. I think a lot of you will like it, so feel free to check that out. The second thing I want you guys to do is put in the comments for today's show what you thought of the 2018 Buffalo Bills draft. Did you like the picks they made? Were you surprised by anything? Did you like the trades? Did you think that there was someone that you would have rather them taken at a certain point in the draft? Do you think they missed out? Tell me everything you're thinking. I want to hear it, and I will be happy to respond to all of the comments later on. And also, if you just want to say hi or give any random comment at all, that's also fine. Do that in the comments below. So usually I start today's show at 1 o'clock, but I have to do it a little bit early. I have a project that I have to do for my senior capstone course, so unfortunately that's been restricting my time, so that's why I'm up earlier today. So for those of you that might not be on this page around this time on Mondays, my name is Joe DeRosa, and I hope you've been following along with my episodes of The Shout, trying to get better week by week, and I've been having so much fun doing this for Buffalo Fanatics. Now, the introductions are out of the way. Let's talk about the 2018 draft. And gentlemen, ladies, every person who is watching this video, I was ecstatic. I was so hyped for the draft. Now, I have been waiting weeks on end to find out who this team is going to pick. How are they going to address the depth they need at each position? What are they going to do? What was Bean's plan? And honestly, it kind of went differently than I was anticipating. And if you have been keeping up with the show, then you would know that I was a big fan of three specific quarterbacks, Josh Rosen, Baker Mayfield, and Lamar Jackson. None of them are Buffalo Bills. Now, I also have said week after week that I would prefer for the team to not draft Josh Allen. I am not a big Josh Allen fan personally. It has nothing to do with who he is as a person. I'm keeping the tweets completely out of this assessment of him. I really, that doesn't bother me. I mean, granted, it's a serious issue, and I understand why people are outraged about it, but we have to understand that this was years ago, and people are stupid, and people should be allowed to have a second chance for something that of this caliber, but I'm not going to get into that. As a prospect, based on his stats, based on watching some of his tape at Wyoming, I was just not that impressed with him. So the pick for Josh Allen was something I wasn't expecting them to do or trade up for, but they did end up drafting him. He is the Bills quarterback now, and maybe I wasn't a huge fan of him, and maybe I'm not you know, too keen on the pick, but one way or another, this is the person who will most likely be the starting quarterback coming to 2018, unless they decide to go with McCarron and let him sit. So... Whether you, whatever you feel about him, whether whatever you consider him as a prospect, however you feel about his play, what he could bring to the table, we need to accept that this man is who they decided to draft. And rather than alienating him and being like me on draft night and getting really upset and thinking they were going to take Rosen, we need to just drop it and accept that he's the quarterback now. Whether you like it or not, this man is who they decided to go with. This is their guy, and this is what we're going to run with. So just to brief you on all of the picks that you might have missed for the draft, it went as follows. Their first pick at number seven, which they traded with Tampa Bay. They traded two second-round picks, so they didn't have a pick in the second round. They got Josh Allen, quarterback from Wyoming. A lot of people projected him to go to Buffalo. I personally thought it was smokescreen. I was wrong. Josh Allen is the Buffalo Bills' new quarterback. Then they did what I think was my favorite move for the Bills in the draft. They traded up to 16 and got Tremaine Edmonds. And if you guys followed along with my mock draft that I did a few weeks back, I had it where they stayed at 12 and 22 and ended up getting Roquan Smith at 12. Surprisingly, Roquan Smith went to the Bears in the top 10. Tremaine Edmonds excuse me, did not go 
anywhere in the top 15, and I was very surprised. I did not think he was going to fall that far, but he did. So McBean saw an opportunity, traded up for him, and took him, and now Tremaine Edmonds is going to be a linebacker for the Bills. I am ecstatic about this pick. I think he is a physical freak. He can really – he's so versatile. He can play middle or outside. He's got a lot of speed. He's 19, going to be 20. He's younger than me, which is surprising because I look like a baby. I know. But he's younger than me. This kid has so much athleticism. So I'm very excited that he is a Buffalo Bill. I thought he was the best linebacker in this draft, and that linebacker is in Bill's Mafia. So we should be very excited about it. So now they didn't have a second-round pick after trading for Allen. They go into the third round, and they did what I think was the best possible move they could do in this round. They drafted Harrison Phillips out of Stanford, which we all know is evidently going to be the Kyle Williams replacement, and what better way to find the successful heir to the Kyle Williams era than someone who emulates him perfectly. A blue-collar guy, a physical tackler, 103 tackles in his last year at Stanford. That is insane for a D-tackle, and he is a Buffalo Bill. He is going to be the person that's going to be a core part of this D-line for years to come, so I am ecstatic about it. He seems very excited to be a Buffalo Bill. I know Fanatics posted a video on their Instagram showing him. I'm thrilled about Harrison Phillips. I'm very excited to have him as a part of the team. And all of these draft picks, whatever my feelings about them were prior to the draft, they're Bills now, and we should all be excited to have them as well. But Harrison Phillips was someone I really wanted them to get. I don't know if you guys saw it, but there was like a, a little tidbit they put on the NFL Facebook where they had a psychic talk to prospects, and Harrison Phillips was projected to go to the Bills by the psychic. She was right. So I think that was a pretty cool little neat thing to share. Now they move on. Fourth round, they take Taron Johnson. I like this pick a lot. Don't let the video of him at the Combine getting hit in the head with a football fool you. This kid's going to be good. I really like his ability to be a ball hawk. I think he can cover really well, and I think McDermott's going to find a really good spot for him on this defense. And they needed cornerback depth. Now, I believe that they were saying that he's going to be someone to fight for the slot role, especially now that the only person we have there is Philip Gaines. I could be wrong on that, so if anyone wants to fact check me, go for it. After that, they took Siren Neal, who was a versatile defensive back. Now, I was surprised that they took him at this point. I really thought they were going to go receiver because I thought they addressed the secondary enough, but I feel McDermott wanted a special teams guy, maybe someone to be rotational on the defense. So I'm okay with it. I think that um, he'll be good in that regard. I'm curious to see what McDermott decides to do with him. I really thought St. Brown was going to be in the sights of the Bills, but I guess not. He's on the Packers now, so I was a little upset about that. But welcome, Siren Neal. And now, this is a very underrated pick that I think the Bills needed to do, and I'm so excited about this. They drafted Wyatt Teller in the fifth round, and as we all know, Richie ended up leaving. Health issues, something with his kidneys. I don't really know the specifics of it, but he had to retire. Whether it was legit or not, he's not a Bill anymore, so we needed his replacement. And if we get the Wyatt Teller that played in 2016, he is going to be the perfect replacement replacement for Richie Incognito. I think this kid is great. I think he's a brick wall. And even though his 2017 season wasn't as stellar, which ultimately led him to drop in projections, I still think that they can channel that inner energy he had from that great year where he just was a freaking bull, man. This dude would not let anyone get to his quarterback. So I'm excited that he's going to be competing for the left guard role. Now, the next two picks are both receivers, which I think is something they needed to do. I would have liked to see them try and go a little bit higher with these two picks or just with one of them at least because I think receiving core is still a bit depleted. But at the end of the day, we all know that there can be receivers that can surprise you in the later rounds. And I think one of the undrafted guys, just a side note, uh, Foster from Alabama, I actually think that man is going to make the uh, roster by the end of the year. I think the only reason he was put so low and not even drafted was because Jalen Hurts couldn't get the ball to anyone besides Besides Calvin Ridley or his running back. So disregard that. These two receivers were necessary. Ray Ray McLeod is a great return man. A lot of people were saying that they have problems with his fumbling, but in the last year of his career at Clemson, he didn't have any drops and he had 50 catches. So I think we should take that for what it is. But I would imagine Ray Ray McLeod and Austin Pro are going to be guys that either compete for uh, slot roles or uh, Ray Ray will be a return man and special teamer and Pro would be a special teamer as well. But it's good that they decided to go for some receiver depth at the end of the draft. So before I go into like every specific pick and what I think of them, ultimately, I think Brendan Bean did a good job in this draft. Now, it was his first draft as the Bills GM, and there were some mistakes made, some things I think he could have avoided that would have ultimately been stronger for the Bills in the long run. But for his first time out there, I think Bean did a good job. Now, really, the only reservations I have with how he went about this draft was the Josh Allen pick specifically. And taking away everything I feel about Josh Allen, it's really the fact that Josh Allen would have been there at number 12. We know Miami didn't go for anyone. We know that uh, the Broncos 
Packers didn't get their quarterback and that the Colts and Buccaneers weren't going to do anything. So to me, I thought it was kind of a waste of giving up your second round picks if Josh Allen was just going to end up being there at 12. And originally, when I saw that being traded up to get to number seven, I thought it was because they wanted to get Rosen because they were afraid that someone was going to swoop in and take Rosen at number 10 or number 12 before they would pick. So I thought they were going to trade up because they knew he'd be gone. But ultimately, they still ended up taking Allen, and I thought they should have stand pet and waited. Now, I've heard some uh, rumors that the Cardinals were kind of breathing in their ear and like threatening to trade up ahead of them. So maybe it was a scare tactic. Maybe the Cardinals had their sight on Rosen the entire time and fooled Bean and got him to trade up when he didn't really need to. But if that wasn't the case and that was just a rumor, I think he should have waited till 12. And if they really wanted Josh Allen, they could have still had him and still had their two second round picks and really just gotten slightly higher talent. I know their second picks, I don't remember where they were specifically, but there was the opportunity to trade up to go get Josh Jackson, who was, in my opinion, going to be an elite corner in the NFL. So That was my main concern with Brandon Bean. I guess the others were more so where he decided to take people in the later rounds. And, I mean, anywhere from fourth and beyond, it's really just a crapshoot. You don't know what talent you're going to get. But I still think there were quality names at receiver, specifically the kid from Memphis, uh, Equinemius St. Brown, other guys there, that I think he should have went before he decided to draft Siren Neal. But, again, this is their world. We're just the fans watching. We're just people that talk about it afterwards. But ultimately, Bean had a bigger plan. And this is a team that I can tell wants people that fit their model. It's not the other way around. They're not just going to go for best player available. They're going to go for the people that they feel are going to work in their system. So if Dable really likes these two receivers they drafted, if he likes the undrafted free agents that he picked up, then so be it. I think... I'll put my faith in the process, even though I was a little bit disheartened with some of the moves in the draft. But save those, it was still a solid draft for me. I was a fan of just every other pick. I think the defense addressed every single bit of depth that needed to, and I'm so excited to see it play out this year. Harrison Phillips is going to come in young, hungry for that D-line, and I think he's going to be an absolute monster in the NFL. And what better mentor to have than Mr. Kyle Williams, who has one more year, and I think will actually be his last year as a Buffalo Bill playoffs or not, Super Bowl or not. Then Taron Johnson, I think, was much needed death for the corner game. Obviously, we brought in Vontae to go alongside Trey White, but we needed someone to solidify the slot corner role. Phillip Gaines... We don't know how he's going to do as a slot corner, and he didn't have a great track record in Kansas City. Now, obviously, I think that scheme can fix someone. EJ Gaines had his problems in L.A., came to Buffalo and played amazing when he was healthy. Phillip Gaines, we don't really know, and even though he could be great, I still think it's a good idea to get corner depth and get your guy behind him who could compete for the slot corner role, end up winning it as a young guy who's hungry, and then just play lights out and really solidify the Bills' secondary. So I'm okay with the move. I think it was a good idea to at least get one more corner in the draft. I was hoping they were going to do it. I think I thought they were going to wait a little bit later, but they decided to go now. So next pick, Wyatt Teller. Again, the death here. I just thought this was a great move. Without Richie, you're going to need someone to fill that spot on the line. Our line, our O-line, in my opinion, is the weakest point of this team. So it was good that they got an underrated prospect to take care of that spot. Whether or not he pans out and plays like 2016 Wyatt Teller is yet to be seen. But It's the NFL, and we're going to see it in the camp, whether he's ready to go or not. And if not, they'll find someone to replace him. Now, the Josh Allen pick. Now, this is... This is something that's interesting to me. I want to stress that I have no quarrel with Josh Allen as a person. Like, again, he seems very excited to be a Buffalo Bill. He seems like he's more than determined to play quarterback for this team, and he wants to do well for the city. And I love that about him. I really admire his work ethic. And you guys know me. I'm a skinny kid who goes to Quinnipiac. I'm not an NFL quarterback. I'm not a college quarterback. So I'm never going to set, talk from the perspective that I know what he goes through and know how it works. I don't. I don't play this position. But – Just watching him, and from my personal opinion of Josh Allen, I wasn't a huge fan of his play, but there are some silver linings that I've come across people saying that I think have reassured me a little bit on the pick, and even though they traded up for him and they shouldn't have, I still think there's something there. There is a lot of potential for Josh Allen. So taking away my negatives, I want to look at some of the positives of his game. The kid has a cannon arm, and take that for what it will, but I really think that he could have... You know, I think his arm is perfect for the NFL. He's got tremendous power in his throws. So if we're talking any quick throws that Dable might have planned for him, if they decide to run a low-risk offense or his intermediate passes, I think he'll do fine there. He can stand tall in the pocket. I don't want to hear anyone worry about height anymore. He's a balance of starter. A 6'5 person is not going to have any issue seeing over 
over the line, so disregard that. I really like the way he steps up in the pocket. I think if developed right, he could really showcase some poise, kind of like a Ben Roethlisberger or even a Case Keenum, where he could just stay put in the pocket and make the throws he needs to make. That's something he needs to develop. But probably the biggest silver lining that I found from people talking about Josh Allen was that the offense he run while pro style wasn't very gimmicky. Now, you can look at the completion percentages of Josh Rosen, of Baker Mayfield, of, uh, of Sam Darnold, and you could be impressed by them. But ultimately, their offenses ran a lot more short intermediate passes. They ran a lot more screens, something along the 5-10 yard line. And, you know, that can inflate your completion percentage. Josh Allen's offense didn't rely on that as much and really – entailed intermediate passes midfield deep balls which of course are harder to throw and harder to make more precise especially when your receivers aren't getting separation so that could be a very big contributor to his low comp completion percentage and if we look at past nfl quarterbacks that have made it brett Favre, joe montana theirs was in the 50 percent range and got developed to be great nfl quarterbacks now again those are very minor silver linings that we're going to have to see if they actually are relevant to when Allen comes into camp. But really, take that for what you will, and let's just hope that he can compete in Buffalo and be the quarterback that we all want him to be, that all of the negative opinions we had of him in the draft are washed out and that he ends up wowing us all. And if he comes across this video somehow and sees it, I want to apologize for any negative thoughts I might have said about Josh Allen on Twitter. I really hope he can do well for us. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. I just hope he can do well for us. Now, one thing that I want to think, uh, talk about, too, I'm really happy that the Jets took Darnold and didn't take Rosen, didn't take uh, Mayfield or anyone like that. They couldn't take Mayfield. I'm happy the Jets took Darnold because, in my opinion, Darnold is going to end up being Fitzpatrick 2.0. Uh, I really just don't think he's ready for the NFL, and I don't think the Jets are a team that can develop a quarterback well. Not saying the Bills are any better, but I don't think the Jets are either. So I'm not really concerned about them at this point unless he decides to prove me wrong. So now – Another player I want to talk about that we drafted, Tremaine Edmonds. I got to him before, but I want to talk about him again. I really, this is my favorite pick in the draft. This is unbelievable that they got him. I did not think he was going to be there at number 16. This dude is a freaking workhorse, and I'm just so excited to see him play. Kid has so much ability on the ball. He can be fast. He can get outside. He can play up the middle. He can get to the court. He can do it all, and I'm just so ready to see him do it for the Bills. I don't know what McDermott wants to do yet, but honestly, the fact that Preston Brown left, the fact that Raymond Humber was looking to be the starting middle linebacker, I think this is all going to get erased, but again, it's ultimately up to McDermott to see what he does with him. So that's my opinion on the draft and if I had to give you a solid grade for the Bills for this year I'm going to give it a B and while there was good to it it also had its consequences it wasn't a perfect draft I think there were certain things that Bean could have done a little bit better from my view but again it all comes down to camp and projections I said this yesterday on Twitter are toxic they're not the most fair thing someone can play lights out potential and you see these people that go in the sixth seventh round undrafted that could end up being phenomenal NFL talents Antonio Brown Tom Brady these are all just perfect examples of it low-hanging fruit I know but it's still true so you know, we can give our draft grades and everything, but at the end of the day, we just have to see how these dudes compete in training camp. And I think we could be very surprised, specifically by some of the undrafted guys, but I want to wait till next week to talk about undrafted guys. This is specifically about our picks. We just got to wait till minicamp and see what they do. Now, maybe I didn't like all of these picks, but I hope that they can play well for the Bills. I'm sure we're all going to be hoping for them. And ultimately, my final grade will be a B for this draft, but could be an A if they end up panning out. So we'll see. All right. That is my opinion on the matter. Now, I want to read some of the things that you guys have said to me. If you guys are watching this and haven't commented anything, shoot a comment down below and tell me what you thought of the draft. People you wanted them to take, maybe just certain things that you disagreed with about what I said or things you agreed with. Whatever you want to say, I'm here to talk about it. So let's take a look. All right. Pete Boniker says, love all the picks, might have done sleepers, and then says, love the Phillips pick. He's a beast. Excited to see him and Tremaine Edmonds on the field. Completely agree, Pete. Those two guys are probably my two favorite points of this draft. I think D-tackle still needed a little more addressing, and linebacker especially needed someone to fill that void. And those two guys, in my opinion, were the best players available at both points, but also people that could fit in the scheme really well. So it's a win-win situation there, and I'm so happy that these two guys are Bills. I think they're going to be perfect in this defense. Phillips and Edmonds will be studs, solidify the middle. Again, Maurice, I agree. These guys are going to be awesome. I'm really excited. Let's just hope for the best for these two in their careers. Not worth missing out on a quarterback just to be cheap. And uh, Cliff Fippen said, hindsight is 2020. Denver would have picked up Allen and av available. But uh, 
You see, I don't know if Denver wanted Allen when Bradley Chubb slipped on the board for them, and I think they really wanted another person on the defensive line or if they're going to have him play linebacker because he was in the 3-4. I think they were looking at BPA, and I think Bradley Chubb was the BPA for the Broncos, and that's who they wanted. So, I mean, again, we picked after Denver, and Denver didn't take Allen. So because of that, then they had the Colts pick, so we still had another pick after that, and I thought that they were just going to stay put because, really, Rosen, Allen, and Lamar Jackson were all still on the board at this point. So, yes, hindsight is twenty twenty, but Broncos were picking at five. They didn't do any trading up. They didn't take any quarterbacks. I think Beam was playing on what they were going to do, but, again, with them not picking, unless there was something that we didn't hear about, whether a team was breathing down their neck trying to trade up ahead of them that they caught wind of, I think it would have just made more sense to wait at 12. But, you know, that answer seems too easy for me. Of course, I do think that there might have been more to it that we just don't know. But really, Denver didn't take Allen. They took Chubb. And because of that, we ended up, you know, having an opportunity to get any of the three, which we, in my opinion, could have just stayed and waited for. And not worth missing out on a quarterback just to be cheap. I don't think we were going to miss out on a quarterback. And again, it's this is one of the things I had a problem with is I really think any of those guys could have been there at 12 and because of this well I shouldn't say any of those guys been there at 12 because Arizona ended up trading up uh let me see Denver had a trade in place with Buffalo until Chubb fell gotcha okay I actually did not know that I didn't hear about that so that makes a lot more sense but you know what after Chubb fell and they canceled the trade again I think once you see them take that pick you know that the people after them the only threat that was within range to trade up was Arizona and honestly maybe this is just from the bias of someone who wanted the team to take Josh Rosen I really would have been fine if Arizona was linked to Josh Allen and took him because then I would have just been hyped because I would have left either Rosen or Jackson to be taken and I like those prospects a lot more than Allen at the time but still I mean, we're going to have to see how he performs and how Chubb performs in Denver to see if their decision to not trade with us was worth it. And getting back to not worth missing out on a quarterback just to be cheap, I don't even think it's being cheap. I think, again, one of those prospects will be there, and then if you take Allen, you still get the guy you want. You can still trade up for Edmonds, and then you still have those two second-round picks, which are crucial, because then at that point, you're getting a higher uh, defensive tackle prospect. You're getting a higher cornerback prospect. And, I mean, not to say that I dislike what they chose at round three. Again, I love Harrison Phillips, and I love uh, Taron Johnson. I think those are good picks. But you could have gotten somewhat more value at that point, and that's the, that's my whole sentiment on the matter. This was the thing that kind of bothered me the most about the draft was just, they ended up, you know, giving up 12 to go to seven, ultimately giving up two round, second round picks and just, you know, not needing to do that in the long run. And yeah, I mean, I'm speaking from someone who watched it happen on TV and wasn't in the draft room with them and didn't hear the rumors, but this is how it went down. And I really don't think that Arizona was going to take Allen, evidently by the fact that they took Rosen. I think that that was all smokescreen to get the bills to trade up if that's true. So that's my perspective on it. And disagree with me all you want, but really I'm going to stand firm and say that unless there was some major thing that was driving them crazy to the point where they had to trade up, it just made way more sense for me for them to just stay at 12. But again, that's how it went down. This is, this is how it's going to end up being. Allen's the quarterback. Rosen's a cardinal. Maybe they got what they wanted. Maybe we just were a little too paranoid, and it could have been a first draft jitter for Bean. We don't know for sure, but this is how it played out. Let me say. Losing the two second-round picks hurt. Could have kept one of them. I agree, Maurice. I, I really would have liked them to have kept the second-round picks. I was kind of upset that they were gone. Um, at that point, you could have really gotten a top prospect and maintained what you got later in the draft. They really could have – I mean, I still wanted them to get a running back. I was so sure that they were going to end up drafting one. Um, but, you know, without your second-round picks, all of the really top-tier running backs were gone. There was no more Rashad Penny, no Sony Michelle. Chubb was gone, Darius Geis, Ronald Jones. All of them were gone. And I'm really surprised Rashad Penny got taken so early in the draft. But I guess some people had him as a first-round talent, so so be it. But, yeah, I mean – that you had a lot of talent still on the board in the second and third round. So, I mean, imagine if they still got to hold on to those two second picks and keep the third one they had, still getting Harrison Phillips, but having two more guys on top of him, that could have been unbelievable. And again, it's just something that I think they shot themselves in the foot in that regard. But it, it hurt, but I mean, I still think it was a decent draft. I still think at their point where they were drafting, they got pretty much hit the nail on the head on everything except the receivers. I still would have liked to see that earlier, but I would have liked second round picks, yes. Yeah, but Buffalo, but what Buffalo really didn't want Lamar. I mean, maybe they didn't, but I mean, even then, you still had the option of Rosen and Allen. Unless Arizona trades up and takes Rosen, then you still have Allen on the board because no one's going to trade up to take him. So that's that was my whole thing with it. You think Allen and Rosen would have been gone at 12? 
I don't know. I, I don't know because I don't think any other team was really going to try to trade up to go get Allen if he was still on the board. I mean, after Arizona, you just had Buffalo there. Miami wasn't going to take him, and I don't think Miami wanted to move out of that spot because they needed a safety. So, I mean, like, it's so it's so easy – you know, to say that like a team could have traded up because based on their need, but in my opinion, you got to think about the other team that has the need at the defensive position and who's there on the board. Miami wanted safety, and I don't think they were moving out of eleven. I think the Raiders had the option to trade down, and they got a good enough haul for it where they could. I think that's why Arizona was able to move up so easily. But I think Allen would have still been there at twelve, or if the Cardinals took him, Rosen still would have been there at twelve because I don't think either of those quarterbacks were going to get taken by anyone else, or anyone was going to trade up for them because it was too much capital. Because at least with Arizona, they were within range of the tenth pick. But I mean, a team like Pittsburgh, or if you want to go a team like Baltimore or anything like that, they weren't going to move up that much. I don't think they saw it as worth it, and you saw it with Baltimore getting Lamar Jackson. That's my opinion. Let's say. For the Bills, it was Allen. That's why they moved up and got him. Quit crying about it. I mean, Cliff, listen, man. I'm I'm saying more so. I know they wanted Allen. Obviously, they took him. I'm just thinking in hindsight, it would have been better to stay at 12. Now, I mean, granted, like I said before, I don't know if what they heard was someone trying to get him and that was their guy, the guy they did the most scouting on and they moved up for him. I just didn't see it as worth it. And again, I said before, Allen is a great guy and I'm wishing for the best. I really wanted him to, you know, I wanted to succeed in Buffalo. So I'm not going to keep wishing ill and keep complaining about it because ultimately that's getting us nowhere as Bills fans. We should support him and make him feel welcome here. And I know you're a fan of him too, so I'm going to leave it at that. But I was just saying, you know, if Alan was their guy and taking my opinion out of it, I don't think they should have traded up. Simple as that. But I appreciate you throwing that sentiment in. Let's see. This is fun. I'm enjoying this, you guys. Keep it coming. Allen would have been – oh, I already read that one. Let's see. It was house money, though, with all the deals. I think everyone is forgetting that this is a competitive rebuild. Next year they have 10 picks, three are conditional, and roughly $80 million in cap. That's a fair point. I actually do agree with that, and I always do forget about the salary cap for next year. They have so much money, and they have a lot of draft capital next year too. So I am excited to see what they do with it. But personally, I still think in the realm of this year and everything that they could have done, even though they did garner some capital for next year, and maybe next year doesn't have a great free agency class, I still look at what you need for this upcoming season. And unless they have a plan to kind of take this team through a true you know, year of maybe decline and getting all the rookies to play, I think it would have just been wiser to hold on to those second picks but you are right in that regard they did build a lot for next year and I am I mean we get we have a lot more hype for next year's draft now to see what else they need after this year but you know I think a lot of it you might be looking to the future but you also have a season coming up with a lot riding on it and with your rookie quarterback with all these rookies playing and you know a team of veterans that are still there that want to win I think the GM's job should still be focused primarily on the new year and I think a lot of that has to do with you know, just everything that's on stake for your team, especially with them just making the playoffs this past year, you don't want to regress. I don't think that looks good no matter how you spin it, even if your plan was to be good in years to come. So I think in that regard, it still would have been wiser to just hold on to the second picks and run with what you have next year. But I'm not going to totally disagree with that point because it makes a lot of sense. So, yes. Whew. This has been fun, guys. I really appreciate you guys all chiming in. And again, just want to stress, this is all my opinion. None of you guys have to agree with it if you don't want to. I'm not coming out of here and casting dispersions on any of the players. You know, the draft came and went. They got who they got. They saw potential in these picks. And we just got to wish that they're going to do well for this team. So if that is everything you guys have for me, I am going to log off now because I have to go do a project, because unfortunately my senior year of college is absolute hell. But if you like what you heard, feel free to follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter at show underscore DeRosa. The link to this video will be on our YouTube at some point later in the week, so stay tuned for that. And I will have today's podcast posted on my Shout Engine later today, so if you want to re-listen and hear what happens or you know hear more or try to re-listen to anything or whatever you feel like doing, it will be up there later, and I'll be sure to get on that right away. So I want to thank you all for listening to me. My rant, if you have any more opinions, you can feel free to DM me. You guys stay tuned. Let's go Buffalo and have a lovely Monday, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to end this live video because it takes forever to do so. So stay tuned.